Georgia Fortunato. I'm Bethany. I'm Kristen. I'm Tracy. I'm Rita. I'm Miriam. I'm Carrie. I'm Ian. Hi, I'm Lisa. Kim Hamilton. And Laura Hirsch. Megan Graham. Grace Diaz. Lee Gaspar. Shilpa Knight. Zalda Collins. Donna Pregon. Amanda Simino. Mary Reynolds. Sue Turcotte. Brenda Borgard. This is my partner. Kristen Michelena. Jennifer Becchio. I am Miriam Shalcross Smith. And I am Amy Shalcross Vogel. And we're mother and daughter in business. I am woman. Hear me roar in numbers too big to ignore. Hello there, and welcome to Women's Business. My name is Jillian Fain. And this is my co-host, Marianne Shalcross-Smith. We would like to welcome you to our mentoring program designed to educating our community on issues facing working women. We will be speaking to our guests in the areas of arts, sciences, education, law, medicine, politics, and business. The goal of the show is to provide information that comes only from personal experience and pass this information down to our daughters, nieces, neighbors, family, and friends. Much of the content will relate to the guest speaker's journey in their chosen profession what they learned about this process and what they wish they had known before the journey began. Since women-owned businesses are the fastest growing sector of our economy, my guests will close with the lesson that they would like to pass on to our listening audience. Our guest today is Amy Chauvin, and welcome to the show. Thank you, Joe. Um, thank you for being here, Amy. So why don't you start by telling us a little bit about um, your journey into what you've been doing. All right, so what I'm doing right now, it's called the Cobia Harvest and the Green Machine. We teach hydroponics in the classroom um, with a project called Project Sprout. Um, my journey into it started with my education in elementary education. Oh. I ended up not going into it. I did substitute teach for the end of the semester. Decided it wasn't for me at the time because there was not many jobs open at that time. I probably would have been subbing for about five years. So I chose um, I met my business partner and we opened up two healthy food restaurants called Jack's. Um, it was primarily everything was prepped and healthy right in our restaurant. Smoothies, salads, burritos, um, wraps, and burgers. And everything was cooked right in front, in front of you. So definitely on the healthy, healthy mindset. From that, um, my partner was introduced to a gentleman named Irving Backman. He, um, his company is Irving Backman and Associates. He's been involved in many technologies throughout the years. Um, a copia harvest and the green machine being one of them. Um, so we'll rewind about three years. And then Project Sprout and the Green Machine took off about last last September, within the past year. So we've mm -hmm. been very busy. So busy, people yeah, doing uh, you, um, you in classrooms, you in after school. I know for us, for kids club, you in the after school program, yep. which has been a wonderful, wonderful match. Yep. Uh, yes. The kids have learned so much through the process. Yep. But are you going into schools and setting them up in the um, elementary schools or middle schools? We have started last September with um, Joy Feldman and the Picture of Children's Health, um, visiting alongside her, um, teaching about healthy, healthy eating, and then growing indoors and hydroponics. Um, we've been to about 30 schools with her to date oh. this past school year, and then we have about 15 in classrooms throughout Rhode Island and um, Massachusetts. We did our first high school two weeks ago. Did you do a high school? Yes. Fantastic. So we're in a biology classroom in Worcester Technical High School right now. Wow. Yep. So for those people who don't really know what hydroponics are, um, obviously you have a machine with you today. What would be a way to describe the difference between growing in the ground and then growing in one of your machines? All right, this is a perfect, let me just, I'll just grab this one quickly. Oh, you can't, oh, I'm connected. Yeah, okay. All right, so this is one that we use with the kids. Growing hydroponically is basically growing in a nutrient solution without using soil. We use water and it's a sponge-like um, sponge -like thing called Grodan that holds the plant up. You can see the water coming out of it right there. Um, indoor farming, we can grow 52 weeks out of the year. Um, it takes about lettuce, cilantro, scallions, kale. It takes about 30 to 45 days um, to harvest. Indoors, this is what we show the kids. Um, indoors, it would be the light bulb, which is just the, the grow lights. Outdoor would be sunlight. Indoor would be um, just regular water. Outdoor would be rainwater. And then indoor, it's in a controlled environment. Outdoors, obviously planted in the soil. 
So this is just a very, very easy guide for kids to learn. Well, let me add to that. Mm -hmm. Last night, my husband came running inside the house about this at dusk, and he's like, Marianne, all of our lettuce plants, all of our basil plants, and all of our tomato plants have just been eaten by the deers. So, your animals can't eat them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and also, no pesticides. And no pesticides. Indoors, we don't have to use the pesticides that you would use outdoors for the bugs and everything. I just thought of that, like, God, all, all that money that we put on all those plants to have a right. uh, garden right by our door, we got to start all over again. So that's yeah. definitely not going to happen if, unless you have a deer in your house. I don't think so. No. And it's, it's great, especially in um, urban communities because you can do it indoors. Yes. Our facility in Central Falls, it's a hundred year building and we have, um, we're going to be growing up to 30,000 plants in 2,000 wow. square feet. Whoa. A little over 2,000 square feet. Mm. So that will be gearing up probably end of the summer to actually do tours and walkthroughs of that facility. Wow. How about the electricity mm. piece of it? Is it expensive to keep the lights on? It is not. We came up with um, the equation for the, the double layer green machine, the one yep. that Kids Club has. Yep. Um, and it's about the whole machine, if it was running all day, which the lights do go off at night and the pumps go off and on throughout the day. So yep. if it was running nonstop 24 hours, it's about 34 cents a day. Wow, pretty cool, pretty yep. cool. And then the other lights, we do have special lights at our facility that are a little bit more efficient too. Wow, so. wow. Good to know. Now you mentioned that you'll be growing about 30,000 plants. What will you do with the plants after they're grown? Do you sell them or how do you work with them? Yep. We, in the beginning we've been, we have been donating the plants to um, local, local food banks. Mm -hmm. um, once we do our first full of the 30,000 harvest, we will be um, teaming up with local restaurants. We'll be trying um, the farmers markets, especially the winter farmers markets because in the winter there's a shortage of produce mm -hmm. um, and then <laughs> and then I would say the excess we have um, some of the produce that is not able to use we've been c composting and bring it to a farm wow. great yep so we're trying to use every last little you bit are of it. doing it wow that's yep. fantastic and now so if somebody wanted to to use a green machine would it be something that's better commercially, or is this something that people could have in their own homes? No, nope. this this one holds 32 plants. This is technically a tabletop one that someone could grow in their homes year-round. Um, commercially, it's a much larger scale, and then, so for example, say a high school, they could have a 300 square foot area of commercial hydroponic systems, and then they could use it in their lunchrooms or in their cafes in their school. Wow. Yep. That's a great idea. I never thought to um, have the schools use it within mm -hmm. their own lunch and rooms. Yeah, Has that been something that's been of interest to people? Absolutely. We're that's in the great. works of a couple right now. That's Very awesome. exciting. I know we um, at our own office have built and We've experienced, <laughs> the, whole experienced the whole process yes, ourselves, yes. Um, which has been incredible for us. I think we think it's so much easier for the kids to go and take care of it. And to be honest, it does seem like a process that would be um, – thrown in the machine and they go on, but we learned a lot about pH levels and about um, other things that we didn't know. <laughs> okay, and we're back. Um, we apologize for the quick technical difficulty there. Uh, Amy, we were just talking a little bit about um, our office using the green machine. We have had the opportunity to experience the machine from start to finish, um, from the growing process right through harvesting it and eating it in our own office, yeah. um, which was really exciting. I think that we thought um, the process was a lot easier than it was. Mm -hmm. We found that we had to test pH levels. Yep. <laughs> we were um, mm -hmm. we were bringing in people and making a chart in our own office of people to, to watch the machine, to make sure the temperatures were right, to make mm -hmm. sure that our levels were right, that we were feeding it properly with the nutrients. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's a great tool to have you know the adults experience it as much as the kids have. I yeah, think we learned absolutely. we learned how much the kids were actually doing mm -hmm. and how they were able to experience what we were because we became frustrated when our pH levels were off and yeah. we couldn't yeah. get things the way we wanted them to. And someone couldn't be able to do it that week, and someone else had to take over. So we came uh -huh. up. You realize exactly what the students were doing in the classroom, and you realize how, how much of it was a hands-on project, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um,
um, we realized the kids were definitely learning a lot, which is fantastic too. We've and learned it hits on so many different subject oh, areas. Oh, elk, it hits on science, history, math. math, you know, botany, everything, everything about it has been fantastic, yeah. Right down to the um, the arts cooking. And, and, and cooking Ooh, and nutrition. learning. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the, the children do the journals that were provided with the machine, yes. and they were writing themselves their frustrations, and I think for us mm -hmm. to read them, we would say, oh, it looks so easy, but to see how much they were experiencing it. Mm -hmm. And it lends to the students to be able to all have an opportunity to be hands-on with it. Mm -hmm. um, so if they're not doing it today, they're definitely doing it tomorrow because it gets done every day. So everybody's getting a chance to be at the machine, to mm -hmm. see what the machine can do, and then experiencing the benefits of it at the end. Um, and it was great for us to be able to pass out all of the, the things afterwards and we took pictures of what we made with it and um, had some recipes, so it was, it was fun. What did the kids do with it at the end? Did they bring it home or? We had so much that the students were able to bring home uh -huh. as well as they made the basil yogurt pops that were in the okay. book um, and they did a pesto with, um, with a bread and pasta, that kind oh. of thing. Very nice. So, and did they uh, share some of the teacher's room too? How are they put some of the teacher's room? And the there. teacher's room um, and the principal, well, everyone could walk by the room, see the machine, and mm -hmm. wanted to see what was going to happen at the end of it. So they were able to all be a part of the end of the machine um, okay. and knowing that it was built and made right in their classroom, right down the mm -hmm. hallway, was a huge, you know, yeah. a huge thing for us. So, very nice. It was the collaboration mm -hmm. between the school department um, and Kids Club, and, you know, mm -hmm. Acopia was incredible for everyone. Now you talk about history, but how long have these been around? Like, why, why am I just figuring out at 60? <laughs> Hydroponics has been around for many years. Really? It used to, way back, it used to be floating gardens. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. And then it's evolved. I know in the 70s it was really big, um, growing like tomato plants and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. This particular system we developed, um, the green machine, about approximately a little over a year ago it was developed. Wow. And we, we wanted it. Um, easily maintain, maintainable, able to fit in and out of doors of classrooms. Mm -hmm. Our two level mm -hmm. is about up to here. It has 64 plants and it's on wheels. So instead of carrying it, you can just push it in and out of the classrooms. Mm -hmm. um, our, the way our teeth, we call these teeth, they're set up. We have it staggered so we can get double the amount of plant growth than oh. the original ones that are, that are um, store bought right now. Oh, great. So when you are are going to market this to mm -hmm. people, how would you say people are reacting to it? Is it kind of selling itself or are people skeptical about it? How would you say that process has been? I would say everyone has been extremely enthusiastic about it. Everyone, I was at a conference um, in Newport a few weeks ago and we had a table. The green machine was a hit. Everyone was so curious, they asked so many questions and I feel like compared to about two years ago, because I, I started with Acopia about two and a half, three years ago, and then people really didn't know about hydroponics. So I think oh, we've really? been doing a good job of informing adults, kids, and everyone about hydroponics. We have one being shown this Friday in um, a retirement community. Wow. Oh, great. So uh, being on the wheels in a retirement community, it's, it's perfect for people that can't necessarily get outdoors to grow, they'll be able to do it right indoors in their, their yes. own community. Year round, being in New England, we only have very short summers, so. It's not like eating fresh vegetables. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it's not so fresh, but even it has a different taste. Mm -hmm. And uh, then to be a part of it, I mean, I have this little outdoor garden by my backyard, and this is certainly brought it for a different dimension, but the minute you pick it from your garden, you pick because you've had a part of it, mm -hmm. even that makes them taste better, I swear. Oh, know? absolutely. Mm -hmm. So this is this is just an amazing thing. I mean, I can see it in the future, this being like in many, many homes, yep. taking it. I didn't see one that short. The one we have is like, as you said, double the size. Yep, but right. that's like picture perfect for a home size. Yep. And it also keeps uh, can engage a family into yep. this whole process too. Besides just the summer months from Memorial Day till like you know September, that can that can go year round. Yeah, the thing is with um, there's a lot of school gardens mm -hmm. programs that are being started. So the schools will start their their school gardens, go you know, in May, end of April, beginning of May, and then what happens? Summer yeah, hits. Su yeah, so we're trying yeah. to team up with a lot of the summer garden programs, oh, so good, then they yeah. can continue it year round throughout throughout the school year so they can tie into each other. Because mm -hmm. also in the system, you could start growing it and then transplant it into the ground. Sure, absolutely. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. So that's another, another aspect that they could use in the school. 
So you talk a little bit about the education, and I know we've gone through um, the education piece ourselves. Mm -hmm. What does the program offer that educators can use that's already there so that there's like no guessing? How, how does it okay. come into a school and how does it work from start to finish? Okay, um, let me think about the last one I set up. Okay, the high school one that I just set up. So we had it set up on wheels. We had the plants already started. So I went in, I showed them exactly how to do the pH, get the water, water in the black tray, how to connect it, um, put it together, take it apart once, put the plants in, do the pH. Um, it comes with a set of lesson plans and activity book and also okay. a handbook of how to use it. And then any troubleshooting, we're here to help anyone well, if there's any. I wanna say that, yes. I wanna say that. <laughs> As you know, when I first met you last fall, uh, I was with another teacher, mm -hmm. and she ended up uh, leaving and going into a different career. And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh my goodness gracious. And I said, Jill, call Amy. <laughs> Amy will help you out. And Jill said, oh yeah. my God, they're such a resource. So I really want to applaud you for that. Because that could have went in a very different direction. Yeah. Because of your resource, get back to Jill, mm -hmm. answer the questions. Mm -hmm. uh, I just kept the whole thing up and going forward, which was fantastic. Yeah. So Our goal is to make sure, follow up with every system that's out, setting. Um, follow up, see the updates throughout the year, and and hopefully have lots of greens growing. Yeah, how healthy, how yep. healthy. Wow. Did you ever see yourself going into anything? I know you said that you were in the teaching profession, but yep. did you ever see yourself going into anything with gardening and this kind of field? I actually, when I graduated college, I knew that that was not the path for me. So I could say I never thought I would end up back in a full circle in in a in teaching career in a sense <laughs> never mind in hydroponics or or growing vegetables because in a sense it is it's indoor farming so yeah. i would never never have expect expected that at all now how about from the business aspect of the whole thing mm -hmm. are you more the salesperson hands-on going on teaching or are you involved in the book end of it too I'm, i always like to bring that with the woman in business yes I i'm pretty much that. involved <laughs> yes. in all aspects. You are wow. all aspects from Excuse building me. them to marketing them to the office end. Pretty much, pretty much all aspects. I was interested too when you had talked about um, taking feedback from consumers and seeing what you could do to improve the machines. Mm -hmm. um, and also, thank you for coming out and making the improvements to our machine that you know yes. you found others made, which mm -hmm. I thought was a great business model. Um, after using the machines, they found that certain. Um, things weren't working on it or that some tubing, I'm not really familiar with the... Yeah, I think it was the tubing. The, the logistics of it. Yep. Um, but how great that you took the consumer's, you know, feedback and were able to mm -hmm. fix the problems that you thought that they had mm -hmm. and then go out and fix the other machines yep. you had already started. So I think that that's a great business model that um, has led to us keep using it all the time. Yeah. Thank you. So that part is... And another aspect I tell everybody, because it is a science in, in a sense, um, all environments are different. So I may have different oh, water than point. you may have mm -hmm. compared to Providence, compared to Columbia, for yeah. example. Right. Um, so sometimes if the plants aren't liking the water, we have to do certain things to fix that. It could be the, too much humidity in the air. So in, in all different environments, we, we troubleshoot. So it's, it's not a perfect, you can't just take it, it's not gonna be a perfect thing in every single environment. I would never thought of that. Yep. Wow! So there's definitely a few different aspects that yeah. we look into. Little formulas going on here, and yep. how, how it's going to work and how it's not going to work. Wow! Right, and I think you were saying too the the water can change every day with the amount of um, sulfur and everything else that mm -hmm. can be in it that it can change every day. So yep. even though you think you have your water down, it might be different by the time you go and do it the next exactly. day. Exactly. So would you say any one person influenced you in um, in getting into this? I would say um, the initial connection of Irving Backman. He, oh. he is the mastermind of the hydroponics. Um, he had, before Acopia was, was made, um, he had a few of his associates at Salve Regina University in Boston College. So they did do some um, hydro, it was in our systems, but it was hydroponic systems. Mm -hmm. um, and they have them to this state still running at Salve Regina University. Really? Yep. Oh. Did you ever think you were going to be a businesswoman, or did that just kind of evolve? It just, it, it just definitely evolved. <laughs> yeah, I get that. Kind of went yeah. with it. Yeah, you're doing a good job with it too. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. What would you advise a, a young woman who's going into business as as the steps to get into it? So you decide you 
want to take on the um, green machine and the mm -hmm. harvest, what were your steps in, in really beginning that process? I would say if you have an amazing idea, don't overthink it. Wow. Yes, have your notebook. I carry a notebook everywhere. I have notes. Even Saturday night, I'll be out to dinner. I'll have a notebook just writing down ideas. So I would say don't overthink it in, in a sense of um, academic things that you learn in college. Because sometimes if you go with what you learn in college, it might not be the right steps. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. it might be a different step that you, you might want to take. And sometimes if I'm hearing you correctly, the a different step can be right in the environment. If you're sitting in a restaurant and you write it down, you know, uh -huh. you might see it right in the environment and that becomes part of the business that you're becomes in. Becomes an idea and an then idea it evolves that I get, into. I get, yes, exactly, yeah. So the, the it, it sounds like everything's a stage for you. Uh -huh. Everything's a stage for learning. Cool. With Project Sprout, it's funny, with, with Joy Feldman and the Picture of Children's Health, I actually went to a doctor's appointment with my grandmother about four years ago, and that's how I met Joy. So Project Sprout evolved with a phone call about a year ago, explaining to her what we're doing with hydroponics, and come September, we were on board with her basically touring all of Rhode Island, parts of Mass, um, and New York. So it all just kind of kind of fit together. Flourish, yes, absolutely, you know, yeah. That's great. Um, and if you, out, outside of this, I mean, I know that this was one of your things that you grew into. What other hobbies would you say have led you to this or have been able to give you the different creative ideas to, to go in directions of education and to restaurants okay. and be able to, you know, talk about going to local farmers markets? What yep. kind of things do you think led you to that? I have always um, been into eating healthy and eating good things. And then the restaurant, I would say, was the tool that brought me into all of this because it was based on healthy eating. And we did, um, let me see, about five years ago, we met with a young lady from Brown. They wanted to do their senior project on top of our restaurant, oh. hydroponically. Wow. But because of the time, it just wasn't, it wasn't the right time to do that. And they actually ended up going with a light bulb, not the hydroponic idea for their senior thesis. So oh, that's wow. what sprung the idea of hydroponics and then just meeting the right people at the right time, it, it put our idea into, into fruition. Hmm. That's great, something that uh, sounds like it just fell into place, like it you said, not to, not to overthink really anything. I mean, that's the, a good way of putting because it. Because if I w would have gone with elementary education into the classroom, I bet none of this would have happened the no, way it did. You couldn't have had time even to start and put yep. the energies and time into that because once you're in a classroom as a teacher, yep. that's, that's very reading, writing, yep. arithmetic, etc. Now, in a sense, I am right back in the classroom. <laughs> you're in a, a very different program, way. So yeah, it's, absolutely. It's you're great. kind of like an adjunct, you know, a really, a really, yep. you've got a great message here about eating healthy. I want to yep. go back. You, had, you said something about eating healthy. Tell me. Yep. Where that stemmed from, was that when you were a child? Did your parents cook healthy? Did you decide that at an adolescent? I started I'm always looking for some ideas on this one. <laughs> nope, I was, Aren't we all? <laughs> I was horrible when I was younger. Um, not, not too bad, but I liked carbs. Pasta, yeah. bagels, pancakes. I had a pancake before school every single day. And when I was about 18, 19, I was introduced to um, chicken, steak, just prepared differently than yeah. I was used to, yeah. and I fell in love with it. Really? And then I started, yeah, on a health, healthy kick. Wow. Yep. So this complements everything that you were kind of yep. working towards anyway. Yes. Um, and for people that are, you know, into the, the health craze, which is, like you said, everywhere now, people are always looking for a new way. Um, this kind of gives that opportunity to be able to mm -hmm. do it within your own home. Yep. And um, I don't know if you guys have done any analysis on this. I mean, cost-wise, mm -hmm. I mean, it must outweigh the benefits cost-wise if you're growing your own. Absolutely. If you just look at this here, how much, if you were to say go to one of the markets, how much it would buy to be to buy um, hydroponically grown or organically grown heads of lettuce? And then you would be doing it right in your own home. So it would be definitely outweigh. What are the better vegetables to grow? Um, basil, lettuce. We talked a little bit about t uh, tomato through Kids Club. But sometimes yep, we can do tomatoes, but in a much larger system. You could maybe start them in this system, but they get way too big. Okay. 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 Yeah, they spread out too. Okay. Yep. So you do have larger systems than if you want to do it like that way too. Yep. We wow. right now are not doing tomatoes. We're just doing the greens and leafy yeah, greens at our facility, but yep. Yep. we eventually will be. Mm. Yep. Now one of our major, major goals is basically to 
impact the planet. That's a great goal. Yep. Imagine going little to by a, little. a uh, restaurant and then just going and picking your tomato off the plant and then having Oh, it absolutely. Out. Like that just, like just I, I think just if you like like you said, I mean, being able to see it and in, in your yep. um, in your factory, I'll call it in Central mm -hmm. Falls, to be able to see behind the glass what yep. is actually being grown and then put on your plates is it's awesome. I mean, that would be it would make me want to go there to eat. My there. partner is in Colombia. He has quite a few kits in Colombia at um, a few universities. One restaurant in Colombia two oh, weeks wow. ago has just this mini one right for the customers to see. So they're growing a bunch of lettuce right on their floor of their restaurant. Nice. Yep, so just we're... Gives you, it just gives you a healthy feeling, too. Oh, know? absolutely. Mm -hmm. We only have a couple minutes left, but how do you balance it all? We always are uh, looking for a good way to balance mm. things. I just go with it because there's okay. always going to be get something. That. I get that. My, my list are ongoing, so yeah. I'll cross a few things off and it will just keep, keep going. <laughs> so I just try to balance it the best that I can. Um, Definitely try to throw a few workouts in there to to balance on that yeah. end. Yep, yep. Is there any particular person who will give you a, a sense of balance of a uh, workload? And because I know it's so important, the workload. Yep. The, the my load, me as a human being, yep. also right. sometimes families yep. involved. So I, I like to just go through your list and see how it works out. Yep. Sometimes you just have to ch <laughs> skip over something on that list. Yeah, huh? sometimes you don't make it to everything on you the list. You wake up in the morning, it's not the same list as it was that right. you started nope. with. That's what I'm hearing <laughs> you say? Yeah. Yes. Well, and like you said, balance. Balance is huge mm -hmm. to be able to, to work with what you have and balance everything and yep. not get you know overly anxious over one thing, but to be able to exactly. just keep going with it. Exactly. That's great. Yeah. And obviously family too. Yep. Spending enough time with my family. Yeah. And, and your family has been supportive of this. Absolutely. Yep. They hey. didn't quite understand it in the beginning. the beginning. I won't tell you what people said to me when I told about <laughs> hydro products. I don't want to yep. put that on woman's business. But I had to re-educate them because I, yep. I couldn't even say the word at one time. Yep. So It's but a learning process. It's a very learning process. But another woman in business. This yes. is amazing. Fantastic. It's All around amazing. healthy food, too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much for joining us today. It's always great to hear um, from different aspects of the business world of what mm -hmm. people are doing out there. So. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Great.